Have you ever tried photographing artwork? Hello, and welcome back to the Visual Center. If you've ever tried to photograph your own artwork, or if you've had someone ask you to photograph their work, you may have found it to be a little bit tricky. So in this video, I'm gonna take you through the four major factors to consider when photographing artwork. A lot of upcoming artists and photographers don't know that this is an actual thing. There is an actual method and technique to creating reproductions of artwork, and it's called copy work. If you're an artist, there are photographers you can hire to do copy work. If you're a photographer, you can learn these techniques and charge for your services. Now this video will be focused on the techniques and methods that'll get you the highest quality reproduction. However, there are several methods to doing copy work, from using copy stands to using a window in the floor. And to learn them all, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. I'll talk about them in other videos. So what are the four major factors to consider when doing copy work? We have lighting, glare, distortion, and color. For copy work, you wanna have nice, even lighting across the artwork. And the best way to achieve this is to use two lights, evenly spaced and equidistant from the artwork. This will ensure that one side of the artwork is not lighter or darker than the other. Glare is a really important factor in copy work, and you wanna eliminate it as much as possible. And that starts with having a controlled environment. You wanna pick a location where you can control the light as much as possible. And another way to reduce glare is to make sure that the two lights you're using are coming in at a 45 degree angle to the artwork, and that'll reduce glare on the surface. Distortion can happen in a couple of ways. And the first is what we call barrel distortion. This happens when your subject is too close to the lens and the outer edges of your subject become distorted and warped. Most of the time this happens with wide angle lenses. And if that's all you have, what you wanna do is move the camera back further and put the artwork in the center of the frame because most of the distortion is gonna happen on the outside edges. But ideally what you wanna use is a more telephoto lens. Anything from the 70 to 125 range would work great. Another type of distortion is called keystoning. This happens when the camera is not parallel to the artwork. The more off they are, the wider one side of the artwork will seem than the other. So making sure the camera and the artwork are as parallel as possible will prevent this issue. When reproducing artwork, you wanna make sure the color matches as close as possible to the original. And there are several things that go into accomplishing this. First, you wanna make sure that the two light sources you're using are the exact same kind of light source. This will ensure that the color temperature in each light source are the same. Next, you'll wanna set your camera's white balance to match that light source. Check out this video for help on setting white balance. And for something a little bit more accurate, I'd recommend a custom white balance. For help on that, here's another video. Additionally, if you use a color checker, you can further improve your color accuracy. Now that we know what potential problems to solve, let's jump into the copy work process. First, you'll need some artwork. I'll be using this piece from a friend of mine, a very talented illustrator, painter, and educator, Beth Ann Anderson. She asked me to photograph this piece for her and graciously let me make this video for it. You can check out more of her work at BethAnnAnderson.com or on Instagram at BethAnnAnderson. Let's get set up. Remember, we need to solve for lighting, glare, distortion, and color. To get even lighting, I'm using two studio strobes placed on either side of the artwork. Bethann's piece has a very glossy surface, and to avoid glare, I'm placing the lights roughly at a 45 degree angle. The angle should eliminate any glare on the surface of the piece. The piece is on a panel with no hardware for hanging, so I'll be leaning it on this drafting table. You might notice that the drafting table is green, and I didn't want that green to cast any color onto the painting, so I wrapped it in white paper. Ideally, if you can mount or hang the piece you're photographing flat on a wall, it will be easier to align the camera. So to fix any keystoning, I just need to make sure my camera is parallel with the painting. It might be difficult to get it perfect, so you'll need to make some adjustments in post-production. But the closer you can get it in camera, 
the better the image quality will be. To help with the distortion, I'm using a 70 millimeter focal length. As I'm using strobes, I'll set my white balance to flash. It's also important that I'm using the same make and model of strobe to ensure even color temperature as well. One way to ensure you have even lighting is to use a light meter. If you use the light meter and measure each corner of the piece, you should get the same reading. If you don't, you just need to adjust your lights until you do. As far as settings go, I'll be setting my ISO to 100 to avoid digital noise. And I'll set my shutter speed to my strobe's sync speed. And for aperture, you'll want to research at which f-stop your lens is at its sharpest. For most of them, it's around f5.6 or f8. Mine is f8, so I'll set it to that. And finally, to improve color accuracy, I'm going to use a color checker. I'm now ready to start taking pictures. To make sure my images are truly sharp, I'll be tethering to Lightroom. This will let me zoom in to check the focus. If you don't have Lightroom or Capture One, a good free alternative is called Sofort Build. I'll put a link in the description below. Because in copy work there's so much preparation beforehand, it really only requires a couple of shots once you have everything dialed in. Now that I have the images, it's time to edit them, and I'll be showing that in part two. Have you ever tried photographing artwork? Which part did you find the hardest? Put your answer in the comments below. And if you have any questions on how to do copy work, put those in the comments as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.